Our current model of agriculture has served us well, and over the last 50 years, food production has outpaced global population growth. So on average, uh, our population of seven, over seven billion people is fed. The question is, will this model that we now have be sufficient by itself to feed nine billion people on a hotter planet? And if not, we need to look at innovations and different ways to actually think of future agriculture. In addition, the world has signed up to the 2030 United Nations Agenda for Sustainable Development, 17 goals, the first of which is zero poverty anywhere by 2030. The second goal is zero hunger. Now, if we're to meet those challenges, uh, our, our current reliance on the major crops and the single cropping system we, we generally adopt won't be enough. We have to look at new crops and we have to look at alternatives to our current system of agricultural production. This requires innovation, and innovation has to include metrics that are greater than simply the yield for profit paradigm. We need to build into our agricultural systems a level of climate resilience and an element of innovation so that agriculture is more than looking at simply the highest yield we can get per unit of land. Innovation includes looking at agriculture and food production in the perspective of nutrition and health. And if we look at health and nutrition, we see that elevated carbon dioxide has more than simple effects on the yields and productivity of crops. It actually changes the micronutrient content and the nutritional value of foods. This requires us to look at other crops than the major crops, crops which actually are already rich in micronutrients to which we can actually add uh, to the major crops and the, and the major cropping systems that we now rely on. If we look forward, we have to look at systems that will be based on metrics and data that provide comparisons between existing systems and novel systems. For that, we need really good data and we need predictions of which systems will actually be uh, sufficient and which systems will be uh, fit for purpose for, for future agriculture. And for that, we actually need indices beyond the yield that include sustainability, nutrition and other factors that we can actually build in to design systems that will be fit for purpose for the generation ahead. Big data and machine learning are being used extensively in several disciplines like finance and medical field. However, its application in agriculture is very limited. Early warning system is a data-driven project that will examine the application of artificial intelligence in agricultural systems. We are planning to deliver an online framework that will allow scientists and decision makers to explore the current and future impact of food and agricultural practices. The system will also provide an alternative solutions for a better future. And now I present to you how we plan to implement this project this is the food insecurity global map in the present day. The more the reddish, the more the country is vulnerable to food insecurity. This is how the future will look like. Several other countries will be severely impacted by food insecurity if we didn't react properly. To solve this problem, we present to you today crop and environment early warning system for climate resilience. The system is divided into three simple sections. Measure and understand the current situation. Predict what's going to happen if we continue with the current food and agriculture practices. And finally, we propose new actions to mitigate the future impact on the only planet we have, Earth. This is the age of data. There is an abundance of data on market, soil, health, weather from multitude of sources such as government, social media, scientific literature and others. But the fear is that we are overloaded with data. Maintaining a global knowledge system for accessing and using these data is the key component for this project. Obtaining the data is stage one. Stage two is processing it and understand the impact of food and agricultural practices with the current and future health, wealth, soil, and climate using the developed indices. We will use artificial intelligence and machine learning to understand the current relationship and predict the future impact 
if we continue doing what we do. Stage three is proposing alternative solutions with clear future impact in both food and agriculture practices. The proposed solutions will be supported by field experiments. For example, growing minor crops in climate control chambers to measure the impact of future climate on micronutrient content of the crop. Another example is to measure the relationship between the phenotype and genotype using machine learning to reduce the breeding time in crops. The ultimate goal of this project is to provide an online web application framework that allows the user to explore the current data sets for a chosen location and to understand the current impact of food and agriculture practices on health, wealth, soil and climate. The framework will propose alternative crops and food that better matches the future of our nations. The project is divided into two main sections. The first one is Artificial Intelligence Framework. It starts with data collection, and as usual, data is never ready for processing. Text mining and data cleaning will be required in the first stage before data processing. Secondly, the researcher will design and test the performance of several neural networks to understand the current and the future impact of food and agriculture practices against the developed indices. Verifying data from data is always questionable. Field experiments will be conducted to measure and confirm the future climate impact on food and crops nutrient and micronutrient content. Machine learning techniques will be used to predict the relationship between genotype and phenotype to reduce the breeding time, for example. Machine learning techniques such as sentiment analysis will be used on social media to understand the influence of social media on food perception. We are not starting from scratch. We have long experience in building global knowledge system for crops. This is www.cropbase.org. This online website allows you to navigate our global knowledge system and our set of tools. Let's start with select crop. These tools allows you to get the list of crops that can grow in your area. This is an interactive Google API that allows you to have an autocomplete function drag and drop the pin. Once you click search, you fire a 280,000 line of code to get the list of crops that can grow in your area. It combines the climate and soil data with 2,300 crops. Here you can have a breakdown of the soil and the climate suitability for each month of the year. Let's choose another location. This time we try to choose a location away from the tropics. For example, let's choose in New Zealand. Once you click search, the engine will try to combine the new location data, climate, soil, and crops information, and display to you in what we call it faceted search interface, Amazon-like, to get the list of crops that can grow in this specific area. And on the left side here, you can filter your results. On top, you can sort your result. And here you can have the navigation of different pages. Once you hover here, you can see the difference of the soil suitability and different month of year suitability. Around here, it's more suitable because this is the summer. Once you click on any given crop, you can get the climate variation impact on the crop in terms of temperature or rainfall. You can see the crop performance from minus 1 degree to plus 8 degree and from minus 50% of the rainfall to plus 50% of the rainfall. And you can check the crop performance and crop suitability in terms of climate impact. The system can generate up to 5 billion graphs for 2,300 crops for any given location around the globe. The second tool is SS Crop. It accesses our global knowledge system to get the information about different food products. You can click here on different food products to get the nutrition content comparison for those specific products. You can also visualize the nutrition content comparison of those products in the nutrition graphs. These all come directly from our global knowledge system dynamically where the user can add new products and appear here automatically without hard coding. This is how the system will look like when we put everything together. It starts with data and goes through experiments and prediction and ends with the proposal of alternative solution.
the system looks ambitious. However, we have gathered an amazing team from different disciplines, and we studied the system architecture carefully to ensure the system successful delivery. With the effort of our team and our partners all over the globe, and with the support of Future Food Beacon, we will make sure to achieve better life for our planet and generations yet to come. So collectively, through the expertise of our team that spans the University of Nottingham, Crops for the Future, and the University of KwaZulu-Natal, we will build a hub of structured and unstructured data. And through the plan that we've laid out, we will be able to serve the four main functions of an early warning system, which is risk analysis, observation, prediction and modeling, and then the wider dissemination of this information for adoption. So day one, we'll see our postdocs and PhD studentships engaged in systematic collection of data while undertaking the risk assessment of the hazards and vulnerabilities of our current agricultural system. And then this will allow us to assess it against the indices that we will develop through our teamwork, which will then provide a baseline for monitoring and experimentation. The indices will establish the relevant parameters to accurately monitor and assess these identified risks, while also allowing for the design of multi-locational experiments to test the development system. And finally, we will see all the elements come together in the development of an early warning system something that used to be infeasible in the past, but now, with the increased availability of global data sets, software tools, and computing power to process such big data with the ability of machine learning, the scale of such systems is now ever more approachable and can be accessible by, water audi by wider audiences beyond academia. So moving to an agricultural system that looks beyond yield into nutrition, beyond single cropping systems, into building resilience in an extremely hard climate, one can only adapt when such information is available at the palm of one's hand.